What's up guys, thanks for being here for another video. And we've got some real exciting news in Spider Nation. Uh, Jacob Good is now declared for the NBA draft. Uh, shout out to Jacob for that, man. This is all, this is great news for him. Uh, and also good news for the Spiders. You know, don't you guys be alarmed. Uh, some of you guys probably have the traditional way of thinking where when a player you know, signs to an agent or declares for the draft, they foregone their uh, right to come back and play for the school. Um, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, now players are able to go through the draft process up to a certain date. And at any point they can withdraw their, you know, their name and come back to school. Uh, from what it looks like from Jay's announcement, that's what he's kind of thinking he wants to go. Perform in front of the scouts, get some workouts in with some pros in front of the GMs and the coaches there. Get some, get some feedback, uh, see how he performs. And his plan, you know, as of right now, he said, would be to, to come back to school. Um, but you never know, man. Uh, with someone like Jacob, as talented as he is, he might catch the eye of a scout or some coaches that, you know, really tell him, hey, you know, if you, if you come out in the draft this year, we want to take you. You know, we really think you can have a, a spot on our team. And uh, that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today is, you know, what NBA teams are going to be looking for and why, you know, this, this could be a good decision for Jacob. And uh, how he could fit in the NBA. First, I want to tell you, Spires fans, that uh, I'm someone that has a lot of NBA knowledge. As much as I talk about the Spires on here, I've been watching NBA basketball for, I mean, geez, over over 15 years. And I mean, watching it critically. So I've seen a lot of players come in and out of the NBA. Seen a lot of players develop, you know, get better. Uh, you know, in some cases, uh, not improve in certain aspects of their game and all that so seeing players i thought were going to be great coming in the draft and then not perform with all that stuff so uh, i want to talk about jacob a bit and, and what kind of nba scouts are going to be looking for and what they see you know to give him the recommendation that this would be a good move for him to, to go into the draft and see how he see how he measures up the first thing would be is just that jacob has continued to improve his game uh, each and every year but the first aspect of his game I want to bring up is his passing and playmaking ability. Uh, he's very advanced there. Uh, Jacob can make plays that, that no one else can see out on the floor. He's Pirates fans know when he drives baseline or he's coming off a pick and roll. He has a crazy ability that to not only do the pocket passes to the roll man, but even kick out the shooters and, and find angles and zip passes out there that you wouldn't even think are there. He gets, you think he's trapped, you think the arms are too long and he's surrounded, and he's able to find these passes. I know that's definitely one of these things the scouts are looking at. They they want to see if that that playmaker is going to translate, which I believe it will, and it's only going to to get better. I think Jacob's going to become an even better passer uh, as he gets older, and I think that that's something when you translate his game to the NBA. I can see that being the thing that that holds up for sure and that, that teams are going to love to have a guy that can come in and make plays for those around them with all the shooting and playmakers in the league. I mean, somebody's got to be setting these guys up. I mean, I think a, a comparison in terms of the, the type of playmaking could be someone like Alonzo Ball, who's who's getting the pass first. He's looking ahead, uh, finding guys out on the perimeter, you know, driving and, and kicking and just really just making plays that it's tough for other guys to, to duplicate or replicate, you know, because there's so many just scoring score first players and definitely score first guards in the NBA today. The second thing is obviously what he's got a lot of attention for is Thomas Richmond is uh, his defense and his steals. You know, uh, if that's able to, that's something that he can show in the practices and that gets the workouts with the pros is his on ball and just being a pest off ball, you know, getting steals and just, just like I was saying with his passing, Jacob steals, I mean, you can't predict them. He gets them in situations that you're not even used to guys getting steals. Um, and that's just, you know, not only his quicks and his hands and anticipation, but just his, his mind out there, his IQ. Uh, and that's going to, something that's going to continue to develop. I definitely see. Uh, him, you know, if he gets an opportunity to play in the, in the pros one day, that being something that he's definitely able to translate, just being a, a pest on that side of the ball. And again, like I said, I've been following guys that go in the NBA. All you need to do is find your role and find your niche, you know. Not uh, not everybody, every 12, 15 guys in the NBA roster are the most talented out there. Some of those guys just find the role that they've been able to hold on to in the league for 8, 10 years. You know, and Jacob has a bunch of different abilities that can that can hold up in that way. In terms of what scouts are wanting to see improve, they're just wanting to see that, that can be steady. I mean, obviously, as a smaller guard, look at someone like Fred Van Fleet. They want to make sure when you're open, you're gonna you're gonna knock them down. They want your your free throw percentage to be as high as it can be. They want you to take advantage of every easy opportunity that you can have, quote unquote. And I think that's uh, an area that Jacob's really gonna capitalize. And I think his his three-point per shooting uh, percentage doesn't really reflect the good of a shooter he is. 
you know, he was shooting well in the 40s uh, most of the season, but just had a rough stretch at the end of the year. I, I fully expect Jacob to shoot 40% next year uh, and just to show the scouts that he is a, a reliable shooter from deep and definitely can knock him down when open. So I don't think that's going to be an issue, uh, but certainly something that he wants to show uh, the scouts not only in the workouts, but in, if he comes back, show him in the season uh, this coming up season. But really, this is just great news for Jacob and the Spiders. You know, it gives the Spiders a lot of recognition to say that one of their players is declaring for the draft. You know, uh, just makes makes next year even more exciting to think about uh, how good the team can be. Uh, but for Jacob himself, you know, it's just a tremendous opportunity. I mean, every kid's dream is to, you know, play in the NBA. Now he's going to get a chance to see just to see where he measures up at this moment. You know, if he ends up coming back, he'll come back with a lot more feedback coming back, having played against other pro players and, you know, just be able to take that experience with them and go get ready for the draft next year. So uh, it's it's just a great news all the way around. Don't be be alarmed, Spiders fans. You know, he should be coming back. Um, but if he doesn't, like that would mean that some, some great things happen and we'd all be happy for him. So uh, I'm really excited about this news. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to like and share and subscribe if you're new and uh, appreciate you watching.